save and all right this says we should be live so what is going on everybody welcome to another episode here another show uh today i'm very happy it's a little bit different than usual normally i have um you know some uh, which not that this guy is not a language learner but normally it's just uh is somebody doing youtube or something of that nature but today i'm with the i've i've said developer this entire time but you can explain your position a little bit better if you want to um and i'll let you do an introduction but i'm here with what i'm calling the lead developer creator whatever you want of bluebird languages and um yeah do you want to do a brief introduction yeah uh first thanks for having me on i'm happy to to talk about bluebird and answer any questions you might have uh so my name is robert savage and I'm the creator of Bluebird. I'm, I'm the sort of uh, guy behind the curtain in some ways mm -hmm. in that uh, I organized the the army, essentially, which put this together over the past 10 years. Yeah. And uh, I'm the face of the of the product, even though you don't see my face. Right, on this right. Thing. Yeah. yeah. I'm the faceless face. You're, so, you're, you're like the gorillas. Remember the yeah, band, the gorillas? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only I have no, I have no, no cartoon, but... <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, and you know, for those who who aren't familiar, I, I assume anybody listening would would have some under, some basic knowledge of Bluebird. But it's a it's a an app for Android and Apple or iOS, which teaches 163 languages through interactive audio lessons, and it has a lot of complementary things like quizzes and PDF study yeah. guides and um, so it's, it's the 163 languages, you can learn them in any of 143 languages. So what that means is that you can choose any of these 143 languages as your, your, your chosen interface language or your mother mm -hmm. tongue. And you could learn those languages, um, in that mother tongue. So there, there are no gaps. I mean, no matter what language you choose as your mother tongue, mm -hmm. you can learn any of these 163 languages and of course, vice versa. And you could also just little, you know, fun tips. You can, of course, if you're somewhat familiar with a language and you want to learn a third language, you can learn the third language through the second language. So right. you'll be re reinforcing your second language while introducing a completely new language. Yeah. And, and each language course has about 10,000 instructional phrases, which amounts to about 880 um, pre-recorded lessons. And that's about 440 hours. And that means about two and a half years that you could just go, you know, every day for a half hour a day for two and a half years uh, as you make your way through each language. And then of course you can make personalized courses as well. And that's infinite in, essentially because you can choose the number of parameters, um, how long you'd like the course to be, the number of phrases you'd like to learn each day, your skill level, your age range. And with all those inputs, it will create a, a multi-week or multi-month course, which you could then do every day. And interrupt me if I'm you know, going yeah. too much into detail. No, that's, hey, that's, uh, what, I, that's uh, what I've got you here for. Okay. I, I want just getting some, you know, getting explanation and getting the word out and what the product is. So you, okay. you explain. So I'll just, yeah. I'll give a little more detail about the personalized courses and you could ask questions and I can go into specifics, but yeah, sure. Um, so each of those personalized courses is, is set up that you're, you're studying for five days a week. And then there's a, uh, the sixth day is a review day and the review day covers all that you've learned over the past week. Uh, and that, that review day is essentially a quiz that covers all the instructional phrases you've learned. And so on the basis of, of your performance in that quiz, you'll have the option to create an additional audio lesson and quiz for just the ones that you had difficulty with. So, you know, if you've learned 30 phrases over the week and you have trouble with 10 of them, you'll have the option to create a, a, a you know, a, um, a lesson just for those 10 and a quiz that will be based on those 10 as well. And so that, that's just a way of, again, reinforcing. And, and, uh, and you can um, just, for any, any of these, there's also a daily lesson available. So if, you're, if you have like five or 10 minutes a day to learn a language and you don't want to have to make a, well, 
you can make a, a personalized course, which would only be five or 10 minutes a day. But I'm just saying, if you want just to get in and do a quick um, lesson without really thinking about it, you can do these a, pers a daily lesson. And there are three skill levels for that, beginner, intermediate, or advanced. And each day you can do a new one. And currently, once you do that, that daily lesson, it's gone. But in the next update, which is coming this week, you'll have the option of going back in time and being able to do previous daily lessons as well. So if you, you don't want to re refresh or do the quizzes again for those. Cool. Um, and let's see. So in terms of, I mentioned like each language has about 440 hours of, of interactive mm -hmm. audio lessons per language pair. Uh, when you multiply all these together, it comes out to about 5.5 million hours of content of that is pre-recorded audio lessons, which it's sort of mind boggling, just that number, oh, but yeah. it's, it's over 700 years if played, you know, on the website, I give some um, sort of tongue in cheek explanation that if you were a monk in like 1310 or whatever, the, whatever the uh, today might is 750 years and you press play, it would it would just play throughout the last 700 years of history and you, you'd, you'd still be hearing it today. Yeah. So so that in it just when you look at like the cat the catalog the entire audio book catalog of something like audible.com which is the largest you know audio book they're an aggregator essentially um but this is this is much larger even than that and this is just for language learning so mm -hmm. just puts in a perspective about how much just sheer content there is and uh yeah well the one thing that really um uh, impresses me about it is that a lot of times languages are apps that tout, you know, we have a hundred some languages, whatever, obviously, you know, your Spanish, your Japanese, your Chinese will just be these huge courses. But when you get down to languages mm -hmm. like Zulu, Yorba, Afrikaans, um, right, maybe right. even some Scandinavian languages, they'll be really skimpy, but I've noticed, I haven't, you know, dove into all of them but specifically the Afrikaans course for example is yeah it has a full huge. five levels yeah. yeah I mean that's that's I don't have a statistic offhand but um, I would say 80 85 percent of the languages have a full what we call five levels mm -hmm. and that by level I mean if you look at the when you open a language up you'll see it'll say you know daily lessons and personalized courses and there'll be additional choices. One is core vocabulary, and that's what we call a level. And then there's essential verbs and creating sentences, powerful phrases, and then conversation. Each of those is a level. And when you see a, a, a language that has all five, then you know that you know, that's, uh, that has everything. And yeah. again, a majority of, of them have everything. And it also means that you can create personalized courses without um, you know, just an infinite number of personalized courses with that especially if you're coming from a language that also has five, you know, yeah, <laughs> five right. levels. So for example, like give me an example, Somali now has one level. Mm -hmm. And so if you're studying Somali, you'll see one level and you'll see on the mother tongue that you only see one level there too, because you know, you can't, we don't have narration when there's no, there's no other language to narrate into. Right. Obviously. Right. So, yeah, I mean, if someone were to just casually say, oh, okay, I'm, I always want to learn Somali, and they say, okay, well, you know, there's still 1,500 instructional phrases in that, which is, um, it's, it's still a lot more than what you'll find elsewhere. It's just, you're not going to get the full experience. And what happens is, as we develop, so we add levels. Like, for example, the other day, we added all the um, Yoruba so it's a mm -hmm. Nigerian language, as you know. Yeah. Uh, and so we added the fifth level conversation to that. And then that, you know, and upload all the narrations, all this, so like thousands and thousands of audio files were just, you know, suddenly added overnight because of the addition of that. And so I'm not, as you see, I'm not, I'm relatively new to Twitter. Most of my time is essentially developing this. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> but, but, um, so, so I'm not like, you know, 
putting a tweet out every time we add something new. It's pretty much if I did that, it would just be, you know, I just be I would be doing that quite often. And I'm more like just <laughs> let the product speak for itself, and right. people will find it if they're interested in Yoruba. So, uh, but that that explains something about how it's structured. And so, but you know, but what is exciting? It's really exciting to me as a that it's a it's a truly global approach. It's not Anglo-centric in the idea that any of these 143 mother tongues, you could learn any of these 163 languages. And that when you realize, when you, when you just, you know, put yourself out of the United States or, or even Western Europe, even Western Europe, you know, is not that developed in the sense of resources that you can learn other languages with through those languages. Yeah. So what even something like you know, Danish, there's no resource in Danish that allows you to learn 163 languages in Danish or that allows you to learn Danish from 143 languages. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and that, to me, is, is that's what makes it truly global, that you can. And so interestingly, the 146 mother tongues represent over 97% of the world's population in terms of the number of people who are first or second language speakers of that language. Yeah, so that's... it's yeah. So I mean, it covers basically, you know, it covers apart from some, you know, obscure, um, really outlier <laughs> languages right. in, in in far off places, um, but they would still, uh, you know, likely speak the second tongue. Uh, that is as their as their you know that so that they can learn these languages. So you know, often there's the assumption, okay, you know. Uh, like Americans want to learn Spanish and Spanish speakers want to learn American English. Well, you know, that's a huge cultural assumption that if you're a Spanish native Spanish speaker living in the United States, that the only thing you want to learn is English. Well, no, you know, they right. want to learn, they want to learn Russian. They want to learn uh, Igbo or Afrikaans, whatever these languages are. So it just opens up these possibilities that people never even realized could exist. Yeah. And that and that's it's really it's really exciting for me to get feedback from people who are like also in countries where there really is the educational infrastructure is such that they just don't have access to premium tools, right. especially right. If not for free. Do you have access to like the downloads? Does it break it up in terms of country? Have you like has, can, can you see a map in terms of where it's been downloaded to see how it's dispersed throughout the world? Yes, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I have. I have that data uh, by country and also a live stream of what's going on country by country. And uh, all the reviews are organized by device language. So mm. okay. I have a lot of uh, just intelligence about where it's being used and by whom. And, uh, and interestingly, some places are more whatever receptive friendly than others <laughs> you know? right it just by the culture um and so it's just an interesting phenomenon you know so it's sort of a you could think it's sort of like the american americans in world war ii would bring chocolates and you know they assume the kids would want the chocolates well sometimes the kids don't want the chocolates <laughs> you, know? Right. you know what i mean yeah there's, a, there's so, other stuff available yeah well, not even that, but there's just there are cultural things going on that have nothing to do with really any you know it's not a it's nothing to do with um, anything you're offering or anything else that's out there. It's just basically a mindset that could be ingrained over many years just culturally, which could make them resistant for one reason or another. So it's just an interesting thing to to come across, especially when you think you're you're liberating the world and you realize no, you're actually you know, right. some people are not not really receptive to to your idea of of um, you know educational liberation, if you will. Yeah. No, sure. So. Yeah. Um, well, I, I think it's a good and actually, like I um I was introduced to it by uh, Tyler, who he's in the stream. He's posted a couple times in here, and uh, um, Tongue Tied Blog is the. Yeah, the I know. Name. Yeah, Tyler. He yeah. wrote a review, and um, yeah, I'm really grateful for him taking not only the time, but the effort and just the balanced way in which he did it. It was really amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. He, he introduced it to me. I can't remember. Um, I was talking to him on Facebook and he had said something about Iceland. I think Icelandic. And I was like, yes, yeah, so and it's a shame there's not too many good resources. 
And he said, uh, he said, Bluebird has some. And I said, what is Bluebird? And he was like, <laughs> let me tell you. And then he introduced it to me. Because what struck me is, and I know that when I had emailed you the first time, you said, you know, I watched 10 seconds of your, you're done with gamification. And I thought, yes. And that's exactly it. Like every app that comes out is gamified. And I loved the refreshing, no, we just want to teach you. Like, um, and I thought that was really, really cool. Um, and I love the, I love the Pimsler like approach. And I'm not saying that, like, I'm not saying you're, you are Pimsler cause it's, it's different, but I also, cause the Bluebird offers a lot more features than Pimsler does. Um, but I love the kind of the idea of you can jump into conversation. And then of course I love the idea mm-hmm. of if you're not ready for conversation practice, there's the vocabulary builder, the verbs, like there, there's just so many other features Um, and just, you know, of course I test and I've been using it for, I guess a little over a week, maybe close to two weeks. And, you know, cause I didn't want to just immediately be like, this is the greatest app ever. Like I didn't want that just Mm -hmm. initial like flash in the pan, but I mean, a couple of weeks in and I, I, I still think it's, uh, I still think it's as good as the day that, um, that Tyler introduced it to me. Mm -hmm. Um, and I do, and I have have a question here. I'm going to ask this question and then I do want to get a little bit into your background because again, like I said, before the stream started, I feel like that probably goes into a lot of where Bluebird came from, but I'm going to ask this question. Um, and that is, is there a way to systematically go through all of the material for a language in a way to where the lessons build on each other, um, and includes like a spaced repetition style system? Um, well, all of them have the space repetition, space repetition style system. Every, every single lesson has mm-hmm. has that. Um, in terms of building, the the um, generally you'll see the each level gets progressively. Well, it doesn't always progressively get more difficult, but uh, in many cases, see each lesson you'll see whether it's beginner, intermediate, or advanced even in the very beginning of a level. So it's not like, you know what I mean? If you go to like the the, the second unit in a level and you see, oh, there's a lesson there for advanced, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. Um, But there there will be one for beginner as well normally, apart from the conversation, which does require, you see, you know, from from core vocabulary through uh, conversation, it is progress, it's a building block approach. So it gets progressively more difficult. And I'll just, Get into that in, this in, in minute, in a little bit of detail here. Mm-hmm. So, the idea is like, oh, I want to start at the very beginning. I want to learn, you know, I want to get my vocabulary down. And so, we did this big analysis about the words that are in the core vocabulary level, and they comprise 84% of everyday speech. Okay. So, the idea is you get those 2,000 words done. Then you're you can in eighty four percent of everyday speech you know contains at least one of those words right uh, so uh, and then the the verb building thing is the hundred most commonly used verbs in the language and so as you see we're, we're sort of this boot camp we're preparing you now so what's the next step the next step is to have sentence creation which uses the vocabulary the verbs and introduces other sentence building blocks to help you form complete conversations with conjunctions and articles and all these other, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you go on to powerful phrases, which uh, is essentially, again, 1,500 of these these phrases, which are just useful phrases to have in any daily situation. And it's all organized by by situation. If you have to get a haircut, you can go to the haircut <laughs> unit yeah. and and bone up on the words that you'll need to, the phrases that would be common um, to say in that context. So that would be good for travelers in particular when we start traveling again. Uh, right. And then, and then of course, the, uh, the conversation is essentially, it's, it's, it's a woman and a man, and it's a complete like 45 minute conversation. And that's again for, apart from the first one, which is basic conversation, uh, it's it's generally for people who are more advanced in the language. Yeah, I think I think so. the conversations are amazing. I, I did um, I love I love film and I love uh, mm. cinema and stuff. And so I did one the other day, and it was uh, the, the Hitchcock. Com- the, it was the Hitchcock one, and I was like, oh, I was like, whoa, this isn't like talking about Hitchcock. This is literally just a scene from a Hitchcock movie. This is, <laughs> yeah. I was like, this is fantastic. 
<laughs> for North by Northwest. So we, we yeah. sort of, we took we took some liberties with that, but no, it was yeah. it was fantastic though, because especially for me, yeah. and that's honestly that's to me the biggest thing about the app is there's not a thing that you have to do, right? If you go to core vocabulary, you don't have to start at A yeah. and work your way through Z. So I right. was just toying around with a couple things, which this was conversation practice. Uh, and I was like, oh, I love cinema. I love Hitchcock. So let's jump into this. Yeah. Like, I love yeah. the freedom of that. And I think that that is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know, kind of, uh, I, I think that's kind of what's special about the app. You know, it's not a, you know, in Duolingo, you have to work through the specific parts that they want you to. If you work through any other app, you generally have to work through, or if you, you know, you use a company yes. like Pimsleur, you have to do lesson one, two, three, four in terms of just trying to build. Mm -hmm. But this, right. you go right into what you love. Right, and that's I mean, that's essentially I I think it's respect for the learner, as opposed to being too didactic and saying this is the one and only way you can learn. And people are different, and this gives them more freedom to do what to approach the language, because everybody comes at it from different skill levels, interest levels, and so this just gives it's just like a big toy box where you can you can hone your craft. And, special, and, and even specialize in things that are of greatest interest to you. And that's also where the personalized courses come in. If you're a, an airport worker or a nurse, let's say, you know, you, I mean, if you're, let's say you're an American nurse and you want to go to Haiti on a mission and you can then basically, and you want to go in, in a month, you can do a four-week course in Haitian Creole designed for nurses. For you. So it just, it, it's very, very flexible. And it's not just play our game, we'll give you badges, mm -hmm. and we'll keep you addicted to this by giving you, keep on giving you sugar. Yeah. This is more of a full meal that you can digest over 700 years. Yeah. So wh when we have our next chat in 700 years, you'll have a much more, <laughs> you know, <laughs> much deeper yeah. understanding of, of, the, of the, the depth of it. But yeah. Yeah. Um. Nathan McGarvey says, and I know that you had touched on this in an email with you, but I'll, I'll let you do kind of an ex explanation here. Um, will Bluebird continue to be free? And with and if not, when will it be monetized? Um, so the it's been a th that more than I mean, the content has been you know, 10 years in the making. The monetization, if you will, has been more uh, experimental. And the uh, current thinking which seems to be the way. Um, so the, the whole, like the secret behind, you know, how, how do you, you know, how could you work on this for 10 years and, uh, you know, and then release it after 10 years? It doesn't, it sounds like mm -hmm. it's something from the 1800s, you know, some guy writing a novel for 10 years. Right. And then, you know, without any idea whether anybody's going to read it. Uh, so, so I have this parallel product that I license to universities and public libraries and government agencies in the U.S. and Canada. Mm -hmm. And so through developing that, I can sort of um, repurpose some of that content in, into what became this. And so this essentially has been financed by my revenue stream from that. Oh, and okay. so I am basically, it's still essentially comes out of my pocket as the owner of the company. So I do feel a little like YouTube back in like, you know, when I first getting started, like, hey, this is this is a, a really large resource. Mm -hmm. It seems to be something that people want, but we have no idea how we're gonna make money from it. Right. And and then and then obviously now, you know, it's like when what is it the biggest money maker for, for Google now is YouTube. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> so um, not that I'm comparing it to YouTube, but just in the, in the sense of like... No, from a business for, standpoint. For, yeah, basically I wanted to create something great first. And then, so, and then the idea is like, you know, I, I come partially from an education background. So I do want to keep it free for people, especially people who really cannot afford it. Mm -hmm. And countries where this would be, it just would be prohibitive to charge for it. And I don't like ads. I had that for, uh, if you wouldn't mind reminding me about iOS in a second. But I had ads in this for a few weeks, and I got sick of them myself. So okay. I said, I don't want ads in this because it's annoying. So even right. if I'm making money from the ads, I thought, no, I don't want, <laughs> I don't want ads in it. Right. And people, people actually appreciate, just like I, I appreciate 
that there's no interruption. There's no clutter. It's just it's just you and the learning. And you're not being interrupted and, and asked to rate and review and asked to click on the ad and all these things which are just like the sort of I find I find they're they're just crass. So so but the iOS version may still have ads. Just because so there's like over a million installs of this and on Google Play. Whoa. And I don't know, maybe there's like a few dozen, I don't even sure, on on um, the app store. Just because we haven't been doing any promotion on it on the app store, and because, and the reason for that, is, um, well, is that uh, we wanted to just forge ahead with the feature, the feature development in Android and test it out among you know all these people. Yeah. And and then and then just make feature parity with iOS, which probably should be done in a week or so. The other thing is that the app app store takes longer than Google Play sure. to approve apps, and they tend to be more uh, nitpicky about little things which really don't matter. And, and every time you have a new update, no matter how small, some person is going to review it. And it's going to be a different person from the other, the previous one. <laughs> so, yeah. so they'll find some little thing and say, no, it's rejected. And okay, you know, and it's nothing, you know, it's not even major things, just minor things. So that it just takes time. To, but anyway, but just I'm just saying there, there's a little lag there. Yeah. Um, From iOS but anyway, to, to Android, to get, and that's understandable. And to get back to your question about, so yeah, the idea is I'll probably uh, sell it to institutions just like I do with the other product in, in the U.S. and Canada, and for everybody else. Um, and what what that means is that if you're you know if you have a library card or you're a university student or you're a member or a resident in any any number of states that have this this statewide, you'd have it for free anyway. So it's not like, um, and I'm not even advertising in the U.S. So the, like the U.S. the U.S. penetration right now is 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 quite negligible because um, it's yeah I'm not because I'm not I don't I don't see the, the the need or the what's the point of getting people using it in the U.S if it might convert to something, you know, where you have to, oh, then find a library or, find, right. you know, or, find, or move to a new state. That's the easiest thing. You know, just move to a state that has yeah. this. I know Ma Mango does that. Mango Languages does the thing through the library. Like, you can either pay X amount right. of dollars a month or, if that, you know, if, if, if your library offers it, which I'm in such a small area, nothing here within right. 100 miles offers anything. But, right. um but yeah, I mean, so it's and it make it makes sense. And honestly, I mean, with uh, ever since Tyler mentioned to it, mentioned it to me, like I've seen a, a couple more people, more and more people, kind of start to mention it. I mean, it's it's spreading word of mouth pretty well right now. It seems. Well, well you guys are literally the early adopters because, um, again, one of my weird things is that I do know, I uh, know real publicity no no real promotion of this mm -hmm. i'm just basically toiling away trying to make a great product with the idea that yeah i have these existing big clients who uh would you know are interested in it down the road right. so it's not as if i have to come up quickly with a and i don't have venture capital i don't have people breathing down my neck to um to monetize or to mm -hmm. do anything with it and so i have complete freedom which is a great thing. I don't have, you know, I mean, it's just a, it's a rare thing, as you know, to have a product which doesn't really have the need, the, the urgent need to make money right. or, or yeah, people rarity. or people like, you know, so yeah, it just, it's just rare because what it means is I have to pay for it myself, right. yeah. <laughs> but you know, but the, the but the, the upside of that is I can do exactly what I want, and I can I can you know make as many obscure languages as I want, because no one's asking me why you put it why are you putting that language in there. Mm -hmm. Nobody cares about that language. Well, I care about the language. So, uh, so that's where you'll see all these all these choices of, yeah, of of languages which have absolutely no economic sense behind them. You know what I mean? There's no. 
Well, but and, and, if you love languages, that's... yeah. And what I'd mentioned earlier, because because a lot of times you will have, and I'm not going to name anything specifically because there are, I mean, there are fantastic programs out there, but a lot of programs will tout, you know, again, like I said, this high amount of languages. But where Bluebird is different is a majority of them actually have more than just the. Oh, here's right. how you say hello. Like you actually in those languages, like you said, eighty some percent, whatever it was, like, yeah, have the full course available yeah. and that's pretty unheard of because yeah like a lot of times they'll be like oh look we have you know 170 languages but 15 of them are complete and then the others are yeah beginner introductory just, phrases or something right it becomes a bait and switch problem where you're they're just trying to lure you and then you find out the i, I loved in uh, tyler's review that he in the first paragraph he saw he thought this was a scam yeah <laughs> that that um he found that it wasn't but that's Generally, what just what you, yeah, I mean, if you're going to offer something which is has substance, you, you know, because of people's bad experience uh, with products mm-hmm. throughout their lives, they have a certain pre, you know, preconception. But, um, but fortunately, if you look at it and you take some time with it, you see, yeah, that's in fact, it's it's the real the real deal. Yeah, um, and now it's it, not like it's not some gotcha like yeah. ah. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, and actually, um, so I, and I have another question here that can kind of go not necessarily into into something of that nature, but it, it's just about languages, and this could be you know a possibility of one language or adding an additional. Um, Nathan says Dutch and Flemish show as different languages, although there is much agreement and disagreement on them being dialects in different languages. Do you have do you have any general thoughts on that in terms of them being yeah different or dialectual? So you know, um, Flemish is 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 spoken in, in a very specific area mm-hmm. and the, it varies very little from written Dutch, but it's more the pronunciation and the accent which sets it apart. So that's why Flemish is included. And, uh, you know, we can go down that road with any language. You know, think of all the varieties of French that are out there. Um, you know, every North African country that has French as a second language has their own version of French. So, uh, so that that's the reason because people and and people are actually learning Flemish as as distinct from Dutch on this. So there's there is interest in that, especially if they have family or friends or, uh, in, you know, in that specific region, um, let's say in Belgium. And, yeah. So, yeah. Um, Lane Depot said, and actually, uh, this was a continuing thing. I was trying to get information. And, and once he said this, I, it reminded me, I've actually had this. Um, he said, uh, he, he is on iOS as well. And he said, um, uh, he's having on specifically daily lesson, lessons, uh, JavaScript errors on the iPhone app. He just wanted to know if it was a known issue. And it's, um, it is J S O N space oh, yeah. E O F. And the file, it's a parsing. Yeah. So um, this, it's, well, that specifically is not a known error. It's just uh, in a constellation of errors that have, have to do with that, that app being several weeks behind mm. <laughs> in terms of... Um, Versus Android deve- apps. Yeah, it's gotcha. just like there also could be some backward compatibility issues. See, unfortunately, with iOS, there was just not... Um, it's it's just a, a development decision to not take a baby step with Android and then do the same baby step with iOS be, be, just because the the user base was is so markedly different. Oh, I'm sure in terms of numbers, and so yeah. and we don't you know I don't really don't hear from iOS users. And if I mean if if he had written and sometimes you know someone will write that error, I'm saying why is you know as I said that. That's interesting because I was thinking, no, we've we've abolished that in Android, and you say it's iOS. Ah, so that must be right. a backward compatibility thing. Um, so yeah, I expect I expect within the next week and a half, week I say week to two weeks to have the feature parity um, and have a new version up on the um, App Store, which has you know all the the latest and and everything's working perfectly fine. It's just, um, yeah. Sorry about that. It's just, it's just one of the growing pains of. No, I mean it's, it's understandable, and and for it to be, uh, 
you know, especially especially free and especially, you know, it's just one of those things that are uh, I've, I forgot about it until he mentioned that because I did that on daily lessons because I, I use it for Africans as well. And I know uh, it, it gave me that error as well. And I, Is that I, it? And, and your Apple yes, device? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm interested. Yeah. I don't know if Tyler's still in here. I can't remember if Tyler's Android or iOS, but Tyler, if you are in here, let me know. Um, yeah. Ironically, every... <laughs> <laughs> what if all you guys are on you know, iOS? And I'm like talking about an app which is <laughs> yeah. full of full of bugs, and I don't no, even realize it. You know, that's the only yeah, the yeah. only issue that I've ever had is the the daily lessons. For, um, okay, wouldn't, wouldn't yeah. Pop, but I mean, other, I mean, it's been. Well, there'll uh, be other features. No there'll flawless. be yeah, but it, there'll be other features as well, which will magically appear in in the iOS as soon as that's that's up to yeah, um, on the the current version. So, and. Yeah, I mean, and the other problem is that each of these, um, I mean, there's so many feature requests just mm-hmm. because uh, on Android, and it's like, yeah, this is something we want to do. All right, let's get this done. And, you know, let's just get this done in a few days. And then we'll do the Apple update just because you know, I just want that one more thing, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and I'm saying, no, no I, don't hear anything. I, don't, I don't hear anything anyway from Apple users. So let's just, you know, this this. Hurry up, get this done, and then get that out out to Apple. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What um What are your personal opinions on Bluebird being a main language resource or auxiliary supplementary tool? Hmm. You know, I'm not. I don't even know if I'm the right person to ask about that, just because. Um. Essentially, the everything that's in Bluebird is everything that. I would use myself mm-hmm. if I were not in the country. So, you know, my, my background is I lived in Europe and worked there for like 10 years. So okay. in different languages, in French and Italian. Um, and so, you know, I was raised in the U.S. in New York. So, um, and this is back in a time where, you know, you, you went to class and uh, mm-hmm. there was, <laughs> you had textbooks and you did you know, you learn the verb conjugations and you memorize the vocabulary and right. and then you, you got to the country and realized I know nothing. <laughs> right. And and then your head hurts for two weeks while you start, you know, it starts your mind starts to reconfigure itself to understand everything around you. And I I don't you know, and also for language apps that, that promise fluency or it's just it's just ridiculous because it's just like um you know, at best, these things are good preparatory tools mm-hmm. to to get you ready to really inundate yourself linguistically in a culture. Right. And and so I don't I don't um, and I think this this would do a fine job. I don't and I can't really compare it to other things. I mean, I know that as you say, the Pimsleur system. Mm-hmm. When I've used that, I found that was effective. Mm-hmm. Um, when I've tried other like gamified things, I thought this is a good way of getting a lot of people addicted. And I really can't speak to whether it would help or not. And that's the thing that a lot of these things are like, you know, they're not FDA approved. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. There's <laughs> that, not like a, there's a lot of hype and there's a lot of money behind it, pushing it as a cure. But you know, when you do speak to people who actually take that neck, that necessary next step, and use it in real life as opposed to just having as a hobby or some intellectual exercise, uh, then you you realize the limitations of of these things. Um, so we went like we used Bluebird. So I went on a family trip. We went around around the whole world last summer Whoa. before COVID. So we went to Japan and all these European countries and. Um, and so we use Bluebird. My kids were using Bluebird like on the plane. Like nice. we'd take a, we'd fly from Germany to Tokyo and on the plane, they, <laughs> they'd be listening to the absolutely essential expressions or the powerful phrases that is um, to get those 50 most common phrases down right. and, and, and how to pronounce them. And so and my daughter is, was 13. And so, um, and that was her only exposure to Japanese before that. And the interesting thing was that in particular, not only did she remember these things just because of the methodology about this 
this um, space interval method, as you know, mm -hmm. but also that how to pronounce it correctly. Yeah. And so whenever we she would speak, even if only these few phrases to Japanese people, they were invariably impressed with how how native like she sounded, even if she only said a few phrases. Mm -hmm. So that to me was oh that's it, it works you know that right. I'm just saying that was anecdotal but it was really and it went from one country to the next where we're doing this and um, so in terms of yeah implanting these things that you want to learn in your mind effectively over a short period of time and being able to recall them when you need them and be able to pronounce them correctly then I feel this is very effective and I don't I can't speak. To other programs, how how more or less? So anyway, you, you initially said, do I see this as a as something a standalone or as an auxiliary? I uh, I mean, just because you could spend so much time with this, mm -hmm. it, you could make it your your. I mean, I think somewhere I wrote this could be the last language learning app you ever need, mm -hmm. um, which is sounds nice, but it, I, I do believe that that you actually could, if you applied yourself, this could be your go-to app to, you know, to get up to speed in these languages. Yeah. However, however, I can't speak for everybody. And some people may like a variety of methods. They may find that um, for their own learning style, uh, that's something that's gamified, maybe keep them motivated more. And right. whatever it is that gets them learning, that really is the important thing in the end. And, you know, you can't, you, you know, I can't, people are please, you know, this thing, you can't please all the people all the right. time. So, um, yeah. So I, I make okay. no claims. Yeah. I mean, it, it makes sense. Um, let me see. Uh, I see Bluebird offers Levantine Arabic. However, the different countries in Levant, Levant, don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, Syria, Palestine, Lebanon, Jordan have their own individual flavors. Is the Levantine Arabic based on a specific country? Uh, Lebanon slash Jordan. So we tried okay. to get people from, you know, they're all mutually intelligible as far as I know. Uh, and again, we can get really, really specific because once, you know, you know what I mean? Every, e each of those countries then have their dialects and, and then one city next to the other city will have their own dialect and it becomes like Armenian, you know, Eastern, Western. And, and we try to, you know, I would like to further develop it. But yeah, that's sort of a generic uh, catch-all for those countries that you just mentioned. And um, whereas like Algerian Arabic or Moroccan are obviously specific to those countries. Right. But but um, yeah, so, but no Jordanian has said, hey, this is not, you know, Levantine, that's, that's Palestinian. No, they're all, right. you know, everybody's been cool with it. The idea cool. of, yeah, this is mutually intelligible. Cool. Um, how are Bluebird audios recorded? Uh, which the, there's a second part that says, is it AI? I don't believe it's AI. It sounds native to me, but. Is oh, it's it? not AI. No, they're all, they're yeah. all human beings, um, who were, you know, born and raised on earth, planet earth. <laughs> and yeah. they're not, they're not, uh, goodness. No, there's no, uh, I mean, some of them are, I mean, nearly all of them are professional voice artists, mm -hmm. actors, with professional equipment of their own, or else we go into a studio with them. But there's in no case is there a non-human voice being used. Um, that's just a huge no-no, mm, and yeah. it's it's also a huge uh, disadvantage. And again, it all comes down to the economics. It's like, hey, let's let's throw something together. We'll use the uh, Google's you know API, and we'll get you know Sarah or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> the voice is to uh, to read all these phrases, mm. but you you can't. No matter how good AI is, at least you know in this day and age, you can't beat a human and just bring all that a human brings to it and the nuances. Yeah, I mean, imagine listening to that Hitchcock um, <laughs> unit that you listen to with a robot. There's just no there's no way you can. Uh, yeah, because they they. they... They put some feeling behind it, you know. Like yeah, yeah. I mean, they're actors, and that's and that's the thing. <laughs> that, that uh, but yeah, and and what happens is sometimes um, it all depends on the. Uh, so we have to compress, you know, the the quality of the audio mm -hmm. is. I mean, it sounds nice to me. I mean, it's high quality audio. Yeah. But the thing is, you know, we 
we crunch down 30 minutes into a five megabyte file right. so that it's, it's manageable, especially for people in countries with slow bandwidth, uh, mm. slow internet connection. So there, there are some sacrifices that are made just, you know, so it's not like CD quality audio when you get it through your phone. Right. It's just, that's the way it is. But if you were to hear this, and it may sound a little, a little degraded just because of that, but generally not, not bad enough that you'd really notice it. But, you know, and sometimes like the, the voices are so you know, like Tom Brokaw-ish that you wonder, is this for real? But right. yeah, it's just this is the way the guy speaks. You know, it's just <laughs> yes, I would like one too. Yeah, it, it just these these like almost too good to be true um, broadcast quality voices, which are yeah. So yeah, I should answer May, that. No, no, you're and that honestly, the, you saying that with having to compress the audio, like I, I don't know if this would be a lot, but if you, if you were ever trying to monetize it, instead of just monetizing it to monetizing it, it could just be additional features such as download the high res audio or some or high res that's photo but high high quality audio or something like that yeah yeah like <laughs> the audio file version of the uh language learning that's yeah. a good idea yeah it's just you better have the bandwidth to uh because like just, a wave a wave file that's um even mono wave file that's uh mm -hmm. like 30 minutes it's about 120 megs so and it's not i mean for people with great connections that's not so bad i mean like there are people right. download these these FLAC and A AICC these high quality uh, lossless uh, audio files for for audio file purposes. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, that won't be too too bad. I don't know. I, I just think because um, one one thing that I always look for in terms of like if I'm gonna pay for something is is what it, it like um like for example when I look at Duolingo's premium where you can pay ten dollars a month you really don't get anything for it outside of just saying that you're a premium member. Like that's Do you pretty get much a bad. You get a special badge or something. I don't, uh, the only thing that I really know that you get, you get a streak freeze that way. Right. Right. You know, if you miss a day, you don't lose your streak, which also just to break into a side note real quick. I love, at least I haven't found yet. I love that your app does not feature streaks because yeah, um, I find that, um, and one thing I've talked about, maybe this is something, I don't know if you want to take this and run with it. Uh, this is something I mentioned in a live stream that I did the other day. I think if you, which I love the idea that there is no streaks because that puts the ball in your court to study. If you want to study, do it. It's right. not an idea of, oh, I got to hit this day. Well, there are no, but, there are no, push, there are no push alerts either. I mean, yeah. there are a lot of things that are, right. you know what I mean? We, I, I'm not going to, I don't want to invade people's space by right. popping up it's time for you to resume yeah. your Afrikaans course right um and even though some people might welcome that i just find it invasive just like the thing about hey do you love this rate us now rate us right it, it's all this this um i pretty much am a contrarian and like when people say oh you're if you really want this app to succeed you better gamify it mm -hmm. and i think no i'm gonna do you know this is opposite george i'm doing right every, everything <laughs> the opposite yeah. Because I don't believe in that stuff. Yeah. So, and in terms of streaks, what I thought was be would be better, and again, this is just something I was discussing the other day. Because I, I I hate streaks. I used to love them, but then I found that I actually studied less when I was worry about worrying about just hitting a streak. Um, but that's a whole different like psychology thing. But um, I thought instead of having it by day, right? You've hit thirty days. You've hit sixty days. Have it by month, by three month, by year. You studied this many of this many days, right? You completed a lesson six of seven days. And I think that is bigger than the idea of having a seven day streak at just logging on literally long enough so you can just hit a streak. Yeah. Um, but anyway, well, that's, that's... Yeah, yeah. Um, well, that's, that, that's one thing. I don't look too closely at what other people are doing because mm -hmm. just like in music, if you're all you're doing is listening to... Uh, Billie Eilish, then you're going to be influenced to a degree that yeah. everybody starts sounding like Billie Eilish right. and every app starts sounding like Duolingo yeah. and every, you know what I mean? It just becomes yeah. um, the individuality and your, your own voice is lost. Yep. Yeah. You want to definitely want to do things the way, uh, you know, the way that you want. Um, Cause well, and that also makes it feel more genuine. Um, 
Language Learning Lover says, I'm curious about the reasoning for some of the sentences on the app. Example, is this your well? I don't know when I'd ever ask someone that, but I really like the app. Well, when I was um, traveling in the Sudan during drought season, um, oh, no, no. <laughs> Fair enough. Is this your well? Because otherwise you get shot if you drink from someone's well who, you know, it's just yeah. like in Lawrence of Arabia when the guy gets shot for drinking, um, <laughs> you know, Ali gets... Um, Anyway, so so the a lot of the in the creating sentences um, level, and that's where you'll find things these, if you will, unnatural sentences will appear. That their purpose is like compared to like powerful phrases, which are with her, which are really um, you know for specific situations. But anyway, the, the ones in creating sentences are are often for didactic purposes. Mm -hmm. So, um, like, did you go to work? Do you go to work? Will you go to work? And so you think, uh, do you go to work? I would really not say that in real life, but you're learning something about how to, to you know, structure that kind of simple sentence. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the reason for it. Um, and and it, it isn't, yeah, I mean, it's just, and the one with, with water, that's under the water I think it's it maybe actually we maybe in powerful phrases under the water mm. uh, unit about is this your well or is this potable or um, you know it's all these things related to water and a lot of this um, the the research and development about designing this and about the topics we're trying to be global in scope mm -hmm. uh, you know famine and and drought is a big part of many people's lives around the world. Right. And if I'm going to be offering these, um, you know, someone oh, learning Somali in, 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 in Bengali, I want to be uh, sensitive to their everyday uh, experiences right. and, and not just be like, where do I get, you know, some Occitan cream or, or some, you know, <laughs> Right, right. Some, some, some like elite Westerners idea of, of what the world should be. And uh, so that, that pretty much is why you'll find things that are, and also things that are attempting to be culture. You know, um, one of the things that uh, Tyler brought up was about, you know, some people. So I've had this, this unit in my other product, you know, called Words for Women mm -hmm. for about, you know, over 10 years and have been presenting it to women for that long. And no one ever said, you know, could you, you know, maybe think of a more sensitive way to, to name that unit. Mm. And, and Tyler mentioned that some people had been asking about that. I said, sure, if that's, I mean, that, so I made an ant called, now it's called anti-harassment. Um, Cause in fact, not just women could be harassed, you know, but that, you know, you, you I mean, did that come from my experience in like Southern Europe where, where, where women traveling on their own would be, you know, mercilessly harassed um, verbally, right. physically, and they, they need to know how to say get lost. Yeah. And, and whereas it may seem, you know, in Wyoming, for example, where I am, you would never, you know, you, you pretty much would not use that, those, those expressions in everyday life because this isn't, you don't get, but other, I mean, in New York City, for example, you know, if you're, the hard hats are whistling at you and saying something, right. you know, yeah. I mean, it all depends where you are. And it's not just, you know, it's not limited to your country or specific places, but there are, there are all kind of harassment going on. And, and sometimes it's good to know how to, how to, uh, but yeah, but something like that is like, yeah, we can, we can adapt to also changing mores and just changing the way people are thinking about about topics like this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it does, yeah. language does evolve. And, yep. and whereas a few years ago, words for women could be perfectly palatable. Now it, it may have a, a ring of something that's not. Little, so yeah, a little stigma behind it. And yeah, yeah. And yeah, no, I, I think that makes, that makes perfect sense. Um, I, I, I read that in, uh, uh, when I read Tyler's, uh, blog as well, I had read that. And then I, I mean, he saw him immediately. I think he said as of the, posting of that blog that it like you guys had already changed it i believe yeah it's not a these things are and, that, and that's the other thing that it's interesting that people assume that like products are and maybe a lot of products are are slow to change or they're sort of they're set in stone 
But the way I always approach these things is that it has to be very malleable and have the ability to quickly change and correct. And if there is a problem, redo it, regenerate the audio, mm. and just do it over, just do it as fast as possible. And and that's it's just this constant, you know, crawling toward perfection, a perfection you'll never reach. But right. it's I think it's the intent that's really important, not like to just blow off somebody's uh, alerting you to a typo or something, but actually, you know, send it back to the team, figure out what's going on and say, okay, we'll fix that. I mean, somebody pointed out there was some um, just typographical issues with the Greek, which turned out to be a, a formatting thing. Mm -hmm. But we'll, within a week, we're going to have it, um, you know, it, it's it's been progressively fixed. It's like a third fix now. But it'll be all done within a week. And we're also finding other things which could be better. So it's like we're re-recording a lot of other phrases that just could be better than the one. So it's just this constant process. It's very flexible. And you have to just remain sort of in this lotus position <laughs> of right. accepting accepting suggestions and criticism and because that's the only way things get better i find and this is after 10 years so i've been you know so you know what i mean it's sort of like people say oh it's a new app so maybe it has some problems no yeah actually this has been 10 years that we've been you know perfecting this it's just so huge mm. that that you know you may jump in someplace and find and that's why you know it's just it's just good not to jump to conclusions too quickly because you may just you know you may get a bad strawberry you know and throw up all night <laughs> yeah right and never want to eat strawberries again but it's just a lot of it is just bad luck or good luck um so and however i, I still think you know it's 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 99 plus accurate but there's always going to be human and a lot of the errors are just human um inattention just for a moment you know when you're translating thousands of phrases you could just forget a knot, right. you know, and it may not be caught until later on. Then you correct it and that's fine. But it's just things like that, which are, you know, so. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go. I know that you um, you'd asked how long this was and I told you it'd be about an hour. Uh, if anybody has any further questions, let, let me know, because I do want to be mindful of your time. No, no, I can um, I can stay a bit longer. It's not a problem. Okay, cool. If, if there um, are more questions. There yeah. are a couple more things here. Um, for, uh, actually, I'm, I'm going to skip ahead, and then I'm going to skip back. Just just to let you know, uh, Nathan here says, why does Robert come off as one of the most genuine people to listen to? So people, you and well, that's, you. No. yeah, I think well, thanks. genuineness can show through sometimes. Um, Valeri says, how did Robert get the idea for the app? So, um, so I've been working on language learning for, uh, well, literally 30 years. Cause I, and I posted, I just realized it was 30 years ago. Uh -huh. Um, now in the, like in the spring when I, I developed some hypercard, I don't know if you know, anybody knows about hypercard. I, I don't even know if it exists anymore, but it was on the Macintosh two in 1990. So I was developing like Italian verb conjugation, um, software just yeah. for fun, uh, for, uh, and, and that was back then, not to commercialize it just cause I thought I, I could use it myself. And so, so I, this is, this goes just a long way back and I've been learning languages, you know, since the seventies, essentially, um, when I was a kid yeah. and, uh, and I spent a lot of time abroad and traveling and, and then I got into, um, teaching. I, I taught, at an Italian university, and I started a language school in Italy, and I worked for a French publisher, and these were all in, you know, like in French or in Italian, and so um, I was really like a real expat for like 10 years, and my wife is from Denmark, hmm. um, and so, and our kids speak, you know, many languages now, and, and they're just, you know, try to keep, make them very international, and so the whole pretty much my whole life has been about this internationalization and communication and helping people learn. And then I got really into like massive databases. So like in 1995, I started these services. So I've, I've been like on the internet a long time, mm -hmm. um, but I keep a really low profile because I'm just really private. And so sure. I mean, even though you wouldn't, you know, I'm not giving any 
it's just like I don't eh, the whole thing about self promotion. I'm sort of old school in that way. I'd rather just be let the work show and just yeah. sort of be in the background. But um, but yeah, I started doing these massive like subscription services that were just data driven for international trade and uh, just different types of company information, international company information. I made all these different products and I sold them to these publishers. And so I started getting into like information product creation. Mm -hmm. And then um, um, and then I worked for a McKinsey, the consulting firm, and that was in Italy too. So I was doing this all this international work. Um, so anyway, all this congealed um, finally into, and it's funny because the idea of actually making a, a commercial product out of language learning was like, that's about 13 years ago. I was just leafing through a, um, a New Yorker magazine and I saw an ad uh, from Rosetta Stone. Mm -hmm. And it was this sort of goofy ad about a guy trying to, you know, wants to meet a supermodel in Italy. So he's going to learn, he's going to use that product to meet her and, you know, pick her up. And I was saying, I, could, I think I could do better than this. Right. <laughs> no, not the ad. Just like, let me, let me see what this is about. And I'll, I'll, I'll you know, this was my background. I, I would give it a shot. So, um, so yeah. So I just threw myself into the, into that. And, mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, and it was a high bar because I'm, I'm selling to, as I said, universities, public libraries, um, internet, you know, real international sort of, um, where people are critical and they're, they expect high quality. Mm -hmm. So it's been, it's just been, and being responsive to all their needs has been, um, just really good for developing the product. And then, and then this bluebird is sort of like the culmination of what I've learned over these 10 years as well, in terms of also how to present the information and what people could could want from it and so yeah so that's so it really is like um yeah it goes back a long way this wasn't like how what can i how do how can i make money should i should i right. you know, develop some for lesson uh, shoelaces or should i hey how about language learning it looks like people are making money there um so and that's the whole thing it's like you know now it has become again you, about this gamified thing this is like this is the flavor of the week to me. You know, I've just been doing this so long that mm -hmm. it's like I can sort of see historically where this came out of and where it's going. Mm -hmm. And I still think like, you know, it's like hairstyles and, and clothing from 10 or 15 years ago. You recognize that as being of that place. But things that are classic are and, and different ways of learning, which are classic, they still hold their value. Yeah. And it's still the way that people fundamentally learn languages right. again to build a foundation before yeah. no for sure so it's, it's kind of i mean it's just, it seems like it's a culmination of your passion and love mixed with your past passions and love but all rolled up into one yeah it's like it's like the culmination of, of a life yeah. <laughs> a lifetime of being in all these it's in a sense unrelated areas which when put together um add up to more than you know one plus one equals two it's, it's like one right. you know so yeah so it's really uh and it's just it's just really rewarding just personally to be able to be instrumental in i mean i really get i, I don't get well, teary I'm, you know i'm not I don't get teary-eyed <laughs> but right. i get um, a real sense of satisfaction when I get like read reviews like on, on, on Google Play from people who genuinely um, are learning from it, that they're really, that they're diving into it, they're spending hours at it. And it's like, you know, I really feel like I'm helping somebody. Yeah. And uh, it's just, it's just a nice feeling. I mean, yeah. And again, eventually it'll make money somehow. But at the, at the moment, it's just like, right. I want to make it you know, just better and better and better. And with the idea, I just want to make the best, the best uh, thing I can make. And, and, you know, don't worry about the others. <laughs> don't, don't right. worry about the competition or the fact that I don't have 300 million installations or, you know, it's just a matter of, uh, I, I think that quality does rise to the top somehow people like, you know, I agree completely. 
and and it's uh so yeah it's it's just uh yeah um yeah no i I agree completely I, i think um i think any kind of genuineness and any kind of where it's not thrown together for money will always um rise to the top um in terms of like features and stuff, this is a good question, uh, and I, this is something you know um, that I've seen a few places roll out. But um, will Bluebird uh, ever be offered through, like, through a browser or a desktop app? I think so. Yeah, yeah. That's one of the that's one of the things I want to do over the summer, is make a desktop app for it. Cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just it'll be. Um, I think some people would just want that. And uh, it would be cool to have, yeah, for sure. Cool, yeah, because I think that I think honestly, um, like I, I always think about people on their phones, but uh, there's becoming a because a lot of people are listening to stuff at work now, right? Like I actually listen to, uh, like when I'm at work, I jump on YouTube and I'll play either you know some uh, Japanese or whatever you know. Um, and so I think, like, the idea of a desktop app, I think a lot more people are starting to listen to stuff. And not, you know, not that they're taking away from their work, but even just kind of this passive idea of listening, um, a lot more people are doing it from a computer. Um, so, I mean, it's just, a, it's a, yeah. definitely a huge market. Well, it's, it's also, like, just in terms of accessibility, that, you know, with the aging population and a lot of people who just, their eyesight is not that good, mm-hmm. um, having something which is responsive in, in a, a large screen is simply better for a lot of the population. Yeah. And, um, you know, and even though there are people over a certain age who use uh, mobile devices, I, I, many people are just more comfortable with a large, you know, that sitting down in a large screen and having that. Um, so yeah, that's yeah. definitely on the, on the horizon. And, you know, I have a lot of other things I could add to this, but uh-huh. I don't want I don't want to because I don't want to I don't want to um, sacrifice its. See, my other product is just this this cornucopia of everything you can imagine, or we can imagine throwing into it, and I want to keep this one very focused on this one task. Like I can put hundreds of thousands of video clips of people speaking, for example, mm-hmm. in here, but and, and you know. And also have voice recognition and have all all these sort of you know these features, but I don't I don't want to complicate it. Yeah, no. And, I, uh, some sometimes simplicity is um, honestly is key, and th- this may be a weird reference, but um, so I used I grew up doing like sleight of hand card magic, right? Um, I literally my nickname, and to this day, people still actually just call me Magic, right? Um, <laughs> but One thing that I noticed over the years of doing this was that the tricks that took the least effort got the biggest results. The tricks that I had to really concentrate, cover my angles, make sure I was good, make sure this was palmed, you know, all these crazy things, it would still get a reaction, but it wasn't quite as good as some of the ones that were just the the simplest of ideas. Um, And so that's what I equate it to. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's sometimes just a clean, sleek... Be good at what you're doing versus be eh at a whole bunch of different things is the way to go. Yeah. And just for the user experience, it's like, would you rather fly a 747 or, or you know what I mean? Yeah. You have to learn all these controls and all these buttons, what they do. And, and it, it sometimes, I mean, I think it gets demified in the sense of these apps, which are like one-way streets. Like, yeah. you know, you enter here because we don't, we don't want you to think about anything. We just want to keep you hooked. Yeah. Uh, and so that's that's the other extreme is like, let's make it so simple. It looks like something that Fisher Price made with no disrespect to Fisher Price. No, you know I, what I mean? Abs- abs- absolutely. Yeah. I 100%. So, um, are Bluebird and Pronunciator the same? No, they're not. It's it's That's the thing. Pronunciator is, is the cornucopia and Bluebird is the laser focused. Gotcha. <laughs> do one thing well th- uh, thing. And uh, and it's funny because, like, Pronunciator because of um, because of it being available in different states, there are uh, rules about accessibility, which made it necessary for us to make an HTML5 version, 
um, which is fine, you know, for the browser. Yeah. But um, and then, but it's so such a complex program that to maintain parallel apps um, is just, and it's also it's quite cumbersome in the app. And and I don't, you know, I actually don't even, I I uh, I just sort of you know hide under the covers when you know not look at the reviews of the apps mm, <laughs> for right. pronunciator because it's basically like 90% plus of people are using it on their desktop, which is why I see also the utility of the desktop. But, and this uh, will probably be bundled in with Pronunciator as, as the app, perhaps. And that's one possibility, that this will become the app that's distributed with Pronunciator. They'll have the desktop for all that. And then if you really want this, this really streamlined thing, which is uncluttered, then you have um, this app. There'll, there'll be links somehow so that um, people benefit, you know, in a yeah. maximum way. Yeah. Because um, it just makes sense also as an app to keep it simple and and yet have a world of possibilities in it. It's just not. Um, so, yeah, I mean, yeah. essentially, Pronunciator is was born and raised as a browser, you know, as a desktop, laptop, browser thing, experience. And I don't think it translates that well to the app just because there's too many, too many possibilities. Um, right. Not to speak down my own product, but honestly, I think that's, that's just a limitation. So, yeah. No, it's, I understand. And I, I mean, you know, if, if you can, like, the thing is, is like being able to see that, which I, I'm not familiar. The only thing I know about Pronunciator right off is just at the end of the, you know, the the lessons, like, oh, Pronunciator LLC or, you know, right, right, wh whatever. But, um, but I mean, to be able to look at your own product and not just because a lot of people are jaded by that, right? Oh, this is my product. This is the greatest thing ever. Um, no, no. I mean, unless you have an attitude that my product stinks, it'll never get any better. I mean, that's my attitude. That's a, I mean, that's. A I good, mean, that has you have to be self-editing. I mean, that's you have to be like Larry David about yourself and what you do. <laughs> right. Seriously, you, you can't. That's I mean, anybody who's anybody who's happy with themselves or what they do, it's it just you know, I just it, it's not a good sign. Yeah, no, that makes that makes perfect sense to be. 100 You got to beat yourself up and and make everybody around you miserable in order to make something good. I think. Yeah. Um. Let me see. There, there's just a couple more things here. Uh, well, there's two questions that are kind of similar, and it's it's something we went over uh, already. We'll, we can briefly touch on it. And it, it's what are the main differences as far as content for, say, Spanish and far more obscure languages, like 100 levels for Spanish or one for Swahili. And another guy says, are the languages the same as far as content offered and quality? And I know earlier you had, yeah. we had mentioned, just to, to touch over that for some of the newer people that have come yeah. in, yeah, um, yeah. like 80, I don't remember the exact number, 80, yeah, 4, I, 85 percent. I, I don't have the exact percent, but it's it's like... I can I I'll look after and I'll send you an email so you can update. Oh, okay, um, cool, yeah. If you want, but you know, something like eighty percent plus have the full what I call five levels, yeah. and then, um, and then there are a few that have maybe like level one, four, five. Some may just have level four, and you know, a rare one may just have level one, and so. But generally, like as you say, Spanish and Swahili, those two examples, for example, um, mm -hmm. they they they're on. Um, they have an equal number of of yeah. of levels, and and it all depends. And the thing is, a lot of the obscure languages, amazingly, also have five levels. Mm -hmm. So if you look at Miso, M I M I, you know Miso, it's it's just in, in the Assam region of India, uh, have a full five levels. I mean, a lot of these Assamese full five levels. I mean, languages which maybe only a couple hundred thousand people speak will have yeah. full five levels. And yet, uh, maybe like like Somali, for example, mm -hmm. Somali is the one that has like one level, mm -hmm. and a lot has to do with not our desire, because I would like to have five levels of Somali too, but it takes the assembly of a team which can pull off all aspects of that to a high degree, to a high production right. value, and lacking that means that we're not getting that one done because I'm not just going to put anything out there. or have, right. And I'm really not. I'm still not even happy with the Somali that I have. I mean, just the quality of the audio. It's just like, and I've been, some of these languages, I look for years, literally years for mm -hmm. people. Not only the, the translators, 
and the proofreaders, um, but also the voice people. And they all have to be really good because right. what happens is it compromises everything. Because if you – often people will go in and say, oh, I know this language. I'm going to test this, this app out based on the language I know, right? So you can get really lucky or you can get really unlucky. Right. <laughs> and if you have a poorly developed uh, language and someone goes in there who knows something about it, it's just not worth it because it's like, you know, let's just pull that language. You can't even have it because it's just, it's not up to the quality or anything else. Because everybody assumes that, oh, you know, I found a, um, a word that was misspelled in language X, um, you know. And really is the thing is each language is a different team. Mm-hmm. And uh, I have my favorites, but you know, and I and and the thing is, many of the languages have been redone many times. And I, what I mean redone is like um, when I start getting uh, complaints about Korean. Mm-hmm. About four years ago, I said, "Okay, gonna get we're gonna get a whole new team, <laughs> whole new voice people. Yeah. We're gonna go through the whole process again, and we replace the entire thing." And the American English, for example, I had about seven different voice artists over the years, and I've never happy until the current one. I really like the the, the woman's voice, mm-hmm. but um, but I'm just saying it's just it's just this process of continual evolution and um, not being happy, um, and it's sort of and it's sort of like yeah, why do you only have one one level there? I'd love to have you know another one, or and people you know, sometimes we get like penalized right. <laughs> I like the ra- like you guys don't have Esperanto right. you have 163 languages you know Esperanto that's crazy one right. star and it's like you know there are actually about you know 6,000 languages we don't have right <laughs> but we have 163 which is more than anybody else and, you and know, to you a could- high tight and to a high degree in terms of quantity of each it, you know again like we mentioned earlier it's not a bait and switch where it's it's only 13 full languages and 160 not. Right, right. And then the thing like with Esperanto, I have nothing against Esperanto. And I would like to add Esperanto. However, after many years, it's really hard to find people operating at a high level in Esperanto. Yeah. Where uh, it's just, just one of those things. It's like Klingon, you know. I mean, how many... F- <laughs> How many fluent speakers yeah. are there of like, of Klingon? It's under a hundred. I, I remember reading about it one time, and it's <laughs> it's not a lot. Yeah, but you got to find those people, and you got to entice them and pay them. And and the thing is, you know, to translate a full five levels of this, it's it's like it's ten thousand phrases, and that is a serious commitment. Yeah, and a lot of people, you know, they they just they're not ready for 130 hours of translation work, right. you know, on a deadline with their other life commitment. And that's understandable. But that's just the thing. If, if I had it like, oh, just, just translate these 50 words into Esperanto. That's all we need. But then, then it would then be like those products that say, you know, I have all these languages, but we don't have a lot in them just because yeah. we wanted to get you to buy, to buy into this or something. Yeah. So I'd rather not have something until it's ready. No, and um, I think that's very... Uh, I don't know, commendable? Is that the word? I, I think it's very good because um, I would much rather there be one very solid, very good, great level of Somali than five terribly thrown together levels. Yeah. I mean, it, it just, it does a disservice to everybody. And yeah. um, and it comes back to haunt you as the creator of something like this. It's just like having a, you know, yeah. you, put a you publish a book which is full of errors and factual errors and typos and and you know you know what's going to happen <laughs> right you know yeah. people are going to see that they're not going to be duped by that so it just makes no sense to uh, to not treat people with that degree of respect where you you got to give them quality food you can't just give them sugar and fat and expect them to come back to the restaurant because it's fine food you know yeah so no for sure but, yeah um and that, there, there, there's two more questions. One actually was probably, honestly, what we just talked about. Um, if there's anything additional, you can add to it. But the question was, what are some of the main setbacks for developing Bluebird? But I envision 
probably a lot of those setbacks are what you just talked about, but is there anything additional? Well, well a lot of the setbacks are um, just human resource related. Um, I've had some languages in development where it was like really rare and the person was good and yet they suddenly you know had personal problems or health issues and that was the end of it and uh, that is the most heartbreaking thing because and it's like and a lot of it is like um a lot of people don't realize like i mean you know it's a business but Mm. it's like doing a public service you're actually you're actually helping a lot of people and you, you'll never even know it. And so it's like a lot of some languages, it's sort of like the wild west, like, okay, I can do that for $10,000 or something. And, and it's like, you know, <laughs> there's, there's right. no, you know, there's no economic right. justification. And, you know, here's what, you know, here's what we can pay. And it's reasonable, and I pay everybody the same thing, no matter what country they're in. So it's all fair. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like fair trade. Um, but it's a lot of that, especially languages that are 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 rare, and that there are only like a few pioneers that are online in that language. Mm-hmm. That's always and like ten years ago, this was even worse. Oh, I mean, I'm you can sure, imagine yeah. just in terms of the number of people who have come online in the past 10 years. So like I can find talent a lot more easily now than 10 years ago, you know, even for something like German, I mean, just even, you know, major languages to find really, because, you know, 10 years ago, people who were, you know, I'm just saying things like that, but, but um, what are other issues? Um, hmm. I mean, just all, it just, you know, it's a constant, I mean, it, it's fun, but it's like a fun nightmare. I mean, it's a constant, <laughs> it's just constant problems to solve, Yeah. which is like anything. I mean, you know, you're building a house. There's just all these unforeseens and you have to think of creative ways to solve them. And um, you do your best and then, and then you put, it's sort of like, you know, it's a great new feature. I want to get it out there. We've tested it. It seems okay. However, when a million plus people start using it. Yeah. Even if like 0.001% of them, you're still going to have like, you know, a few hundred angry people who it's crashing on. And then if you don't have like that phone from 2013 mm-hmm. with that amount of RAM in our, we have like all these phone, all these tablets. I have, I buy like, and I, what I'll do is I'll buy like a Huawei specific phone Mm-hmm. That was having a specific crash, so we could reproduce it, because there's no way we can re- reduce it. Isn't things like that are like, they're like solving mysteries, like why, you know what I mean? And a lot of people do not. I mean, the ones you hear from are just like tip of the iceberg, typically. You know, the right. ones who will say, and then, and then among them, the ones who will volunteer their time to help you diagnose it because you have no idea what's going on. Mm-hmm. That's an even smaller percentage. So it's a lot of like, you know, trying to figure out in the dark what could be wrong. And so that's that. And then meanwhile, you know, or things like scaling, like like suddenly <laughs> there was a real bad couple of days. Like um, suddenly we had like, you know, I don't know, it was like 100,000. It just was a huge amount of new uh, installations. Mm-hmm. And the server the servers were overloaded Whoa, and bruh. and we had to quickly scale up using Amazon, um, which was this is great for that, but it takes a little time to realize, okay, how much do we need? Uh, you know, what, how many, you know, how many CPUs do we need? <laughs> Let's try to figure this out because in a month, this may be this many people and we don't want to run into this again. But what happens is like you, that, See the people who install at that moment, they assume everything's honky dory. That you know they right. just come into the, they they all of a sudden they're in a war zone and and there's <laughs> basically everybody's yelling at you, like this is the worst app. This is you know it's crashing and it's like okay you know and there's no way to really tell people that we do say like you know this is just <laughs> you know we're overwhelmed at the moment right. but we're doing we're doing we're actively doing things and with a couple of days we hope it's going to be you know we expect to be better 
but you end up with like suddenly it was like the the average rating was like four point two. I thought, oh my goodness, you know, <laughs> it's ruined forever, you know? Right. Because of <laughs> and things like that, and you don't sleep and it's thinking, oh no, you know, we blew it. But actually the rating system is kind of um it, it's it's uh, forgiving in that sense that that you know all the hundreds of thousands of people who have used it since and rated it since. Um, but things like that, those are really, those are like, you know, because everybody assumes that you've got everything, you know, that is like, it's, you know, that everything is, is when you, when you enter the room, everything table set, the food is hot, it's ready to go. But it's, it's, these are all, especially with uh, the COVID. And we, we haven't even mentioned how, what the impact of COVID <laughs> Right. You know, is on something like this where, um, you know, it's just in terms of people availability and, you know, studios and things and lockdowns and, you know, it's just, it's all kind of new challenges, which I'm not complaining. I'm just saying this just one, and it, but it's just this constant problem solving yeah. that you are, that you have to do. And, uh, and it's just, um, it's always a work in progress. I mean, it's just, it's always, there's always improvement you know, and there's always going to be problems. So, right. but it, it's fun because, you know, again, I see the, the, the goal, the end result, which is like people using it and liking it. And, and I don't want to charge, you know, again, I want to, <laughs> I want to sort of subsidize it for all these people who don't have that, that opportunity in their, in their life yeah. to be able to have like, um, you know, product like this, which is free and that they can actually use to as much as they like to, you know, to, to learn whatever they want in their native, in their native tongue. So, um, no, yeah, for, for so sure. I, I don't, and I don't want to pull the rug out like anybody who's currently using it. I'm not going to suddenly say, okay, now you've got to start paying. I, I, that's bad. You right. know? So it's like, you know, any of the X number of people who have it now, um, I'm going to have a way to sort of transition to some, you know, I mean, as you said, that, that Duolingo thing about the premium member, mm -hmm. like it doesn't offer a lot, but there's actually, I mean, there's a reason for that. I mean, there's a reason that they, because they'd anger a lot of people if what they were, or if what they were withholding was valuable. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's very, very true. Yeah. And, and that, is like, oh, we're going to give you a, a you know, a, you have a choice of three badge colors if you're a premium, whatever. I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm just, <laughs> it's just something that isn't necessarily critical yeah. to your success, um, but is a way to sort of make some money on the side. But yeah, yeah. I, I don't. Um, Not, I mean, and that, that, it makes sense because it, it's in a weird spot where you're going to keep a loyal fan base. Um, by taking care of them. I don't know. I mean, I'm anxious to see how Bluebird handles it um, going forward, whether or not you, you know, you decide to monetize. Cause I mean the product itself, I mean, this is a product. I mean, I'm sure I'm not telling you anything that you've not heard before. This is a product people would definitely pay for. Right. Yeah. I mean, like yeah. the, I think the biggest issue that you're facing right now is just name recognition from where, even though you've been going at it for 10 years, it seems like, I mean, I just heard about it well, two, two well, weeks ago, you know, Well, Bluebird is only out two months or three months, whatever it is, you know, it's been like the content is what's 10 years. The app, oh, the a year, so, a year. Okay. Yeah. I gotcha. mean, Bluebird is brand new. I mean, that's the thing, you know, look up Bluebird. I, I mean, so the app is, all, so the app has only been out for a few months and you've, yeah, yeah, yeah. It came out in program. January maybe. So Whoa. it's been, yeah, yeah. So that's not, it hasn't been, um, and yeah, so that's basically, you know, April was, was like, you know, Man. suddenly growth. And so it's been a very short trajectory for the app. I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't want to have developed the app itself for 10 years. That would be pathetic. But the, no, know, I, I was thinking like, yeah, yeah, man, yeah. that's, I mean, crazy dedication. If, if it's only been out for a few months and it's made the impact that it has, that's, Especially in the oversaturated market of uh, bait and switch schemes from from, from language right. learning. I mean, you know, again, I'm not, I'm not naming any specifics, yeah, yeah. but there are definitely some that cost a lot of money who will have, you know, for example, there's one program, uh, again, and I'm, I'm not going to name it, but there's a program right. that'll have, obviously, their Spanish course 
is incredible. And for the same cost, you can get their Russian course, which has, I think, seven modules instead of like 107. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Well, I mean, that's the, uh, you know, you, a lot of these things are speculative. You know, someone, you can't, you know what I mean? That, that there are people make a lot of compromises mm -hmm. in business and don't necessarily, and their ethics may also be diluted by the necessities that they're faced with. Um, and so, you know what I mean? It's just in everyday life, you're, everybody you meet is somehow compromised. Right. It's, it's somehow there's some, there's something that's not completely, and basically the exigencies they have to deal with in their life to make a living um, causes compromises. And, and this, I mean, I really do think this is something that I can do without compromise. Mm -hmm. And and I sort of like, and also I'm just fortunate that I don't have to monetize this. Right. You know, and I don't, I mean, yeah, it's costing money. Um, however, it's just something, as I said, going back to the analogy of YouTube, it's something I feel has real value mm -hmm. and it's sort of a timeless value. And so eventually, yeah, I'll make money from it. But um, what's fun now is the idea of, hey, look at, look at all these people in this country using this, you know, yeah, like Azerbaijan. <laughs> right. Just the, like, all over the place. It's just like, I just really feel, um, again, it's just because that's, that's normally a thing you, you think you save for last, you know, <laughs> or else it gets lost in the pursuit of money. Yeah. The idea of helping people, um, but you know, one thing I, I learned from pronunciators is that like it's in libraries, and I'll have like anecdotal stories of librarians tell me about this person who um, used it and used it to take the citizenship test and passed, mm -hmm. and and it's like, and they say you know you're changing lives, and it's like, and I don't even really think about that. I say, yeah, maybe I am, <laughs> you know, right. and it just. And then I forget about it because I can't just rest on that. You know, oh, I changed a life. I changed, a, <laughs> you know, so I got to keep on, you know, just doing good. We're trying to do good. Um, so that's really, it's just something, it just keeps me going. And that's, um, yeah. But it, it's, again, it's, I'm in a fortunate position where I can do it and yeah. not have the, uh, uh, because I'm taking, basically I'm taking, I'm yeah. taking all, all the bullets personally, you know? Yeah, no. I'm not, I'm not like diffusing. This is all like my, you know, it's sort of like, uh, as they say, it's, you know, like, like venture capital. Oh, it's better to have, uh, you know, a slice of watermelon than a whole grape, you know. I'd rather have the whole watermelon. <laughs> right. Yeah. You sell, you know. Yeah. So, well, hey, look, it, it's been an hour and a half, and I appreciate What, what right. I would like to ask um, you is, uh, what about in say a, a couple of weeks, maybe a month, maybe the start of next month, maybe a part two, and we can get into to more questions. Um, sure. Cause yeah, I, I, to. I think, um, yeah. and it will, we can also see where bluebirds at in a month. I do have, I do have one more question. I think it's a perfect question. Honestly, uh, it's a question I, I was going to ask and then we kind of just got into it and stuff, but, uh, I, I feel like maybe should have been the first question, but, um, and I'm going to get to that in just a second. But um, if anybody has any further questions, I see a question here about uh, adding IPA or romanization. I know that Japanese, for example, has romaji. Um, right. And we uh, maybe can get into that uh, a little bit in that next. Po do you have a short answer for the Do you have any any intentions on adding? I don't know about a, a lot of the other scripted languages. I do know Japanese has romaji. Um, yeah. So, so like romaji and... Um opinion you know for chinese mm. there are some standardized systems like that for for transcription which are you know standard and that we have those and then there are other ones where remember that when we're teaching from 106 146 languages the pronunciation is going to be different like even the phonetic pronunciation of english as presented to a spanish speaker is going to be different than that presented to a Portuguese or a mm. Chinese speaker. So it becomes an exponential problem without a solution unless you take a generic path and make the assumption that they're all going to be sort of, unless you have an IPA, 
mm-hmm. thing. But a lot of people are not, you know, IP is not necessarily for your audience. I'm sure it's fine, but mm-hmm. for your average right learner, it may be more confusing than, <laughs> than anything. Yeah. Um, and then then you get to be like, okay, let's just do this really simplistic, but Anglocentric mm-hmm. type of romanization, which then results in other problems because we're not just dealing with, again, English speakers, but like a Russian person who's learning Hindi. Mm -hmm. And it's like you do a romanization of Hindi with an English twist. And it may not go over well. And then, but anyway, there are, there are languages that, that have, um, that we do have this for, even with that. And you'll find it. It's just sort of a hit and miss at the moment. And, you know, but we do have it like for French, we have a sort of a simplistic romanization. I mean, just, just for the pronunciation. Like, yeah. You know. um, but, but yeah, it, it's the kind of thing that uh, it's, and, and the whole thing is that, you know, this built upon, like, I just thought let's have a pure audio experience. Mm-hmm. They'll, people will stream it in their car. They'll play it on their Google home. They're not going to have that. It's hands free. Mm-hmm. They don't look at the screen. Then I thought, you know, Let's do subtitles. <laughs> yeah, you know, I say subtitles would be really cool. We'll time code it and uh, add subtitles to everything. And then people are like, okay, subtitles are cool, but uh, how about you know, phonetic text romanization? Uh, okay, we'll we'll add that in addition to that where we can. But you see that this is only within a few months that this has been. These are like, you know what I mean? And, and that's why I I. I balk at, at, at adding, you know, romanization is fine, but I said with, with the caveat that those are the limitations. Mm-hmm. But um, there are a lot of other things, you know, in my laboratory that I could add <laughs> to this and make it even cooler, but even more complex and more maybe problematic for people. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Was another question? Was, it, was yeah. that the first yeah. question you said you were going to ask? Or no, no, no. Um, that um, that that one had had just come through. Um, I do want to say before I ask this last question, guys, this I, this is going to be the last question. If you have anything else, um, let me know because I'm I'm going to open up a notepad. I actually have a couple of other things I was going to mention, but I, I'm going to save that for part two because there's still a lot of stuff that we can get into with Bluebird. Like it's that's the thing. There, there's so much information um and and so we can we can get into that because i would love to have you on again and like i said especially to see where bluebird's at in another month or so um but the question that i was going to end on uh and again i I was going to start with this but uh, anyway and that is is there a story or kind of what's the idea behind the name bluebird where does it come from um just yeah I don't, and yeah. maybe that's kind of a, I hope that's not a letdown for me to, to ask. And then you just be like, I literally pulled it out of thin air. And if so, that's super cool as well. But um, no, no, actually there is a story. Um, so um, apart from, you know, bluebirds being, you know, what they are, they're beautiful and gentle and, you know, they're they, here where I live in Wyoming. Um, mm-hmm. There's a, you know, the skiing expression, having a bluebird day. And that's just a a day after a big snowstorm where the sky is completely blue and it's just clear, uncluttered and um, just a perfect environment in which to do something, in this case, skiing. But the same concept, I thought that would be for for bluebird languages, just this, um, you know, this combination of this sort of gentle creature, which is, uh, um, you know, (laughs) simple but elegant. And uh, this idea of this, you know, the ski analogy, because, you know, here skiing is, is quite a big deal. So, sure. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that, that makes sense. Uh, and I think it, uh, I, I think it goes along perfectly and, and, and just in terms of, you know, having a bluebird day, you know, let's study some language. Let's do something awesome. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's so- sort of like, it's, everything's cleared away. The sky is clear. <laughs> there's no no distractions just focus on this this task which is presented in ideally uh you know like a three feet of powder we just want to you know get lost in yeah well that's super cool well look uh i really really appreciate you jumping on um well, thank you it's ton- been a pleasure tons of great information um if anybody uh, you know it's it's on the app store if you search bluebird or bluebird languages it, it is there um i have the link to the website down below in case you guys want to go and check out uh just the website in general i believe there's a little bit of information and stuff on there yeah um, yeah there's a lot of 
the manual in the in the FAQ page, there's a PDF like user guide which yeah. offers some tips and things. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you guys can go go check that stuff out and, and definitely go check it out. And you know, even if you're not familiar with it or whatever, just go check it out and whatever language you're studying, give it a shot. See if it's something that you can uh, incorporate into, you know, just see if you get a feel for it. See if see if it's it's see if it's a good fit for what you're doing. Um and all that stuff. So I, I want to thank everybody for joining. Yeah. Thanks for all the questions. Um, great questions. And like I said, I, I'm, I'm going to, as soon as this ends, I'm going to talk and see about getting a schedule for a, for a second interview. That way we can uh, address some more questions and, and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, and, and, and anybody who's, uh, again, I want to thank everybody who attended as well. Um, and, and feel free to, you can write me directly if you have any questions or just want to say hi. Um, and that's, you can just, I guess, Android at bluebirdlanguages.com will get to me. And, uh, Andrew, I can put that in the description below after, like, when it ends. You said Android. Android, yeah. Just because I'm assuming this is, these are Android. Android, <laughs> Even, right. Android. Yeah, yeah Ty, Tyler said he was Android. Android. Uh, yeah. At yeah, Blue don't write Andrew. It won't, it'll bounce back. Yeah. Hey, that guy said write to Andrew, and there's no yeah. Andrew there. <laughs> Android at bluebirdlanguages.com. Yeah, yeah. bluebirdlanguages.com. Cool. I got so, that in yeah. the description below, so you guys can check that out. So, and uh, yeah, thank you for joining. I think ooh, fantastic chat. I definitely, you know, get a little bit of the stuff because I, I think it can also help kind of demystify some of the stuff. You know, because there's a lot of apps out there you just you're supposed to take at face value, and I think kind of getting a little bit of behind the scenes can, you know, help. Oh, sure kind of see where it's going so uh yeah, thank yeah. you for thank you for chatting guys everybody uh thank you so much for uh thank you so much for joining and um do you have any final any final thing that you want to leave on me yeah um no i'm just gonna go for a hike now okay <laughs> sounds <laughs> sounds good so thanks everybody for joining and i will catch you all in the next stream all right thank you all bye